What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Project Ozone Light. Oh, yeah, guys. So, since last episode, I've done some things around here. The pig keeps staring at me. Uh, yeah. I added in walls here around our platform all the way down to, like, our lower basement areas, and I turned them into rooms. I just think it kind of made more sense that they were a little bit more enclosed instead of just looking like open platforms. So yeah, now we got rooms here. Now the problem is though, now that we got all of these things set up, it kind of feels like it's a little plain. We're going to need some accents, some colors, some things like that. And that's not something that I am good at doing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not good at doing that. I was thinking maybe we could do something like quartz around the outside or, hmm, I don't know, something. I was almost thinking these bridges that we have going across the top platforms, we could bring those all the way down. So these things are, would be kind of connected as a structure, but like the rooms are still going to be separate, right? I was thinking that's something we could be doing. Uh, we also had all of these ME controller blocks. Previously, they were the chiseled blocks, so it looked like they are glowing. Since last time, which was recorded like two days ago, actually, uh, I have replaced all those with the real and the controller block. So this is a full max size controller. But yeah, as we saw before, just the little ME setup that we had over here was using a decent amount of power. We're going to have to figure out a way to get everything powered here and get this all set up. Now, the easiest thing that we could do for power would be lava. We already have lava set up and we're already generating some using the superheating element thing, right? So this produces lava at a rate of 120x compared to the normal one. Like if you use a torch under here, it's 120 times faster than a torch. Uh, I don't know if I want to do lava power though. Lava power to me really feels like one of those old outdated, like when I first started doing modded Minecraft, lava was like the way to go, go to the nether and pump all the lava out kind of a thing. Uh, we could use it and we do have an abundance of lava, but I kind of want to do something just a little bit different. Uh, one of the moo fluid cows we've received over here, as long as it hasn't committed suicide. Is it this one? Yeah, this one's a crude oil moo fluid cow. Now, crude oil is a thermal expansion fluid. I was kind of looking at this before. Uh, crude oil. So this stuff, you can put it through a fractioning still, which will turn the crude oil, one-tenth of a bucket, into tar. And I guess it also makes a tenth of a bucket of this naphtia stuff. I don't even know how to pronounce that. I'll just won't try anymore. Uh, so it also makes this stuff. Um, the crude oil itself can also be put directly into a compression dynamo to make 400,000 RF. Now, I do believe that is the basic dynamo with no augments in there. So you can probably get more RF out of there if you upgrade the dynamo. All right. So that fluid is pretty cool for this particular purpose. This stuff here, though, if we look at the fluid, this, we can also put that through a fractioning still. So that would be a second fractioning still. That'll give us sulfur as a product here. And it also gives us refined fuel. That sounds pretty good. So the compression dynamo also accepts this stuff. A full bucket of that makes 1,250,000 RF. Again, I think that's a basic one without any augments. So you could probably get more than that out of it. All right. So this refined fuel, we look at the uses. Uh, there is no putting it through a still again. This is pretty much the end of the line. So you go from crude oil to that naff, whatever, and that into this refined fuel. This put through a compression dynamo makes 2 million RF. So I kind of feel like I want to go down this road, use thermal expansion fluids, especially since we have a cow, which would potentially give us unlimited fuel. I think that'll be pretty cool. Now, in order to do that though, we're going to need some way to get the crude oil out of that cow and our go-to for that is the Mine Factory Reloaded Rancher. So the Rancher does require a machine, chassis, basic capacitor. We've already made all this before. It does require a Z-Logic controller, though, which requires a slice and splice. Did we make a slice and splice yet? No, we have not made one of those at all. Yeah, we've just made a few machines over here, a couple of thermal expansion, one mechanism, and a couple of Ender I.O., but we have not made the slice and splice. So that's going to be a new thing that we're going to have to make. Now, it does require a zombie head, and I don't remember if we have collected any from our mob farm over here, so we'll have to take a look. Let's pop in over here. 
And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We got plant. <laughs> we got a lot. We got a lot of those. Okay. So that's not something we have to worry about. Uh, so yeah, we definitely have <laughs> all the zombie heads, but we have to make ourselves a slice and splice itself. So let's take a look at that thing. So this requires us to have solarium, some kind of mob skull, and yet another machine chassis. Uh, pair of shears and axe, that's not a big deal. And the machine chassis, yeah, we've seen that before. Solarium, for those of you who haven't seen this before, is soul sand plus gold ingot. Uh, have we collected soul sand yet? I think we farmed some in the nether, right? Mm, maybe we didn't. So soul sand you can make with witch water, putting sand into that. Or since we have an active nether here that's not a void, we could probably go into the nether and go collect some. I think that's probably going to be our first thing that we're going to want to do. Uh, so first things first, I'll get my jetpack charged up here. Yeah, we definitely want that full. And we're going to be playing around the nether. We don't want to be flying over a lava lake and be like, oh no, out of power. That wouldn't be cool. Okay, so we got that done. Let's go to the nether real quick. It's been a minute since we've been there. I think we were just there the one time. Mm, maybe we went there twice. The other time for leveling up our tools. Yeah, let's go to the nether real quick and see if we can find ourselves a little bit of soul sand. And if there isn't any around that's readily available, we might have to look at... I guess like I walked through from the overworld. We might have to look at... Uh, yeah, making it... Oh, there's some Frendermans down there. I don't know if I've seen those guys yet around. Alright, so any soul sand around here? Oh, is that some right there? Or maybe that's that soul stuff, the other stuff. Nope. Oh, I have mob sounds turned off. Yeah, at the base, there's just so many of the mobs around. Okay. Just picking the slimes. Yeah, there's so many of those endermen around. I turned off mob sounds. I kind of like, I was confused for a second. There was like, why is that gas not making any noise? Probably should attack these guys with my looting sword. We did put looting on that, right? Yeah, we did. Okay. So we, there we go. Uh, we got one gas tier out of that and some other stuff. All right, but what we're really looking for is that soul sand. So that wasn't soul sand, which I thought it might have been. Uh, that looks like soul sand right over here. Perfect. All right, so now we got that taken care of. If I can stop bouncing, please. <laughs> Vein mine it. Oh yeah, that's that's delicious soul sand right there is it delicious maybe that's the wrong word maybe i shouldn't have said that one but yeah we got nearly four stacks of soul sand ready to go very easy all right let's go back and put that through our alloy smelter with a little bit of gold to make ourselves a solarium and then we'll be back guys all right guys so i was cooking up half a stack worth of the soul sand and gold ingot and it's just about done uh, i've grabbed a few of those out of here apparently just putting that in my inventory completed a quest and here we are, here's our slice and splice. Okay, so pretty easy machine to make. I did go ahead and make another machine chassis here so we can make our rancher as well, but I am gonna have to make two more shears. And it does look like we are gonna need electrical steel, which I don't think we have. Oh no, we do have that, okay. Uh, we do need plastic, so we're gonna have to look at how to get the rubber, because <laughs> we haven't done that yet. And we do need a fluid conduit. Do we have one of those? No, okay, so let's just make one of those now. So we'll have those for later. That requires quite clear glass. Can we chisel? Can we chisel regular glass into quite clear? I kind of feel like we should be able to. I know we have been able to do that in the past. So we put that into the chisel and... Ooh, it does not look like you can do this. Okay, so that's why that doesn't work. It has to be quite clear glass. Now I think you can smelt... Do you do it as an alloy? Do you smell glass? Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can just do, I kind of, I didn't remember if you could do glass or if you had to do sand and then that smells something like quite clear. But that seems to work just fine. All right, so here's our quite clear glass and our fluid conduit. So that should be everything we need, excluding the Z logic, which we needed our soul, or I'm sorry, slice and splice for, and then these plastic sheets. Okay, well, this area is getting awfully messy, isn't it? <laughs> and it's going to get messier too, I suppose, until we get things cleaned up and we find a proper spot for all these machines. But for right now, this is what we got. So the slice and splice does require us to have an axe 
and a pair of shears in here aside from the recipe so let's go ahead and make one of those uh so we'll go back to this machine here we'll just make another iron axe and then we'll make iron shears probably dark steel is the best to use in these slots they'll last for a long time but even something like iron will last for a pretty long time it's you don't really have to use a lot of slice and splice things in these mod packs and this has emc so eventually we'll just be able to duplicate those out of emc so it won't be that big of a deal so we do need silicon we do need redstone and a zombie head uh two solarium was it zombie do we have zombie i never went back and grabbed one of those so let's go do that now we'll grab one of our zombie skulls and then we should be able to make our z logic controller just like so okay cool don't look at the enderman <laughs> i've looked at those guys so many times and even now they still like it's way better than it used to be they used to instantly kill me but even now it's just annoying like they'll they'll get me in three or four hits if i'm not careful all right so the entire recipe you can just shift click it in there if it's the right one uh we do need to get the upgrades for this and i do remember that we were getting some of those from the loot bag so we'll have to set up an auto loot bag opening thing at some point uh, so we can try and get more of those capacitors, the the loot capacitors or whatever they are called. All right, so we should have everything now except for the plastic sheets. Right, so plastic sheets come from raw plastic, or I guess a block of plastic. But yeah, the raw plastic. You get the raw plastic by smelting down rubber bars or some other various things we might get as rewards, I suppose. Looks like these are all pretty much the same items. So the rubber bar comes from rubber essence if we get into mystical agriculture right uh but we need to get these raw rubbers these come from the rubber trees and i remember getting a rubber sapling do we have it in here yeah we have a mega rubber sapling this is the only rubber that we have collected so far now if we go back to uh jei here and look at rubber sapling we can see we get these out of the basic or the common loot bag, so we can keep opening them up and hoping that we get one of those. But we got the mega one, and we have a vein miner. It just kind of makes sense to me that we'll just go ahead and do this one. <laughs> Might not be the best idea, but nobody else is on the server right now, so I'm not gonna lag anybody out. Uh, but this is gonna make a big, big tree. Do we have another dimension that we can go to? Maybe? Mm -mm, I don't think so. I think we're gonna grow it right on top here. What Y level? We're at Y119. So that's gives it like over a hundred blocks. I don't think it grows that big, but it does grow pretty big. So we'll place that there. We'll do the sapling up here. Then I'll torque it from down here, maybe. Okay, so there we go. Big old tree. I think we should be okay for monsters spawning. Man, look at the lighting updates. <laughs> it's a little weird, huh? If I break one of those, does that fix it? Oh, it does. Okay. Yeah, anyway, so we have a lot of potential rubber happening here. Um, should we make a crook and then get these leaves to make sure that we get a sapling? I'm almost positive just by vein mining this. Just the natural leaves to spawning, we will see... We will see a rubber sapling, so we'll be able to grow more. All right, let's go ahead and just vein mine this. Oh, that's as far up as we go. All right, well, there's a rubber. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and clean up this mess, though. I don't want to leave these trees around. Actually, let's grab a block that they can sit on that's not this tree. Yeah, we'll just vein mine again. We'll just keep doing this until we get rid of everything. I do expect... Uh, I don't want to leave it. Oh, feel that lag. I think we got a rubber sapling, guys. I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think we might have gotten one rubber sapling out of this. I can't pick up anything. My inventory is so full. Oh, so many entities everywhere. All right, let's clean this up. All of you go in there. All of you go in there. Oh, boy. All right. At this point, I kind of wish I had a magnet. <laughs> It'd make my life easier. But yeah, I'll just go around and collect all these saplings, clean up this mess, and then we'll be back, guys. All right, so all of the saplings and stuff is now cleaned up. Oh, you know what? I did leave that dirt block up there. I don't want to do that because that might spawn a monster eventually. Let's get rid of this thing. Uh, we did end up with a decent amount of <laughs> rubber saplings. 
so we can grow the regular sized trees going forward the mega ones are nice for getting a whole lot of stuff you see here we got 905 rubber wood and 841 raw rubber i think we had the same amount but then i took a stack and i smelted that into the bars and smelted again into the raw plastic uh saplings we ended up with 122 rubber saplings off that one tree so yeah that's a pretty good trade pretty good deal there okay so now that we have the raw rubber we can do this get four of the plastic sheets and then we should be able to go ahead and make our rancher i believe that's what we're trying to make here and we have everything we need for it now which is awesome okay so downstairs in this area here this is kind of like maybe we should do it over there i don't know this is kind of like our industrial area and that cow is going to be providing fluid for us to turn into power right so i felt like we should keep our power cow down here anyway uh the one gas here that we got earlier i turned into a safari never usable and i picked up that that cow i didn't want to lose it so yeah now we have a cow right here a fluid cow <laughs> and we need to get a rancher going so i'll go ahead and break out that block right there put the rancher here obviously that needs to be turned around as well just punch it again and do it the right way there we go so that rancher should be able to see the cow uh this does require power though i wonder does this retain power maybe if i go if i go put this on our power system up here we can have enough power retained in it to get our first little bit of fluid so we can power the machines that we need to power off of this thing maybe i don't know does that retain power hopefully it does that'd be pretty awesome give it and it says it has the power stored okay so we don't even have to figure out a way to power this initially did i look no didn't look all right so let's give this back over here to the cow and we gotta wait for the initial idle time i don't know if this was fixed in project ozone 2 uh this rancher would go pretty quick we'd get lots of fluid very very fast like the first time when it can't milk, it takes 400 seconds or 400 ticks. And then it goes faster than that, I believe for the next one. Oh, wait a second. Why did that? This cow might be on a timer since I put in a safari net and set it back down. I think I've seen that before. And this might not be saying what that timer is. I'm pretty sure this does work. We'll just have to wait a little bit and make sure that this can milk it. I'll probably give it a good five minutes. Uh, in the meantime, though, I'll make a drum. So the fluid that potentially will be milked <laughs> or I guess ranched uh, out of that animal will go into some kind of a storage here. So do we have any drums around? We don't have any. So let's look at what it costs to make a drum. Probably an iron drum would be good. Don't need to go super crazy. And if we, that turns out not to be enough, we can always upgrade it to the diamond or the gargantuan version. All right, so there's one iron drum, cool. All right, so we'll just put that right behind the rancher. The rancher should auto eject the fluid into this thing. So I don't believe we really have to do much else at this point. It's just going to be a waiting game. Hopefully the, the cool down for this cow will cool down. And then this rancher will start getting ourselves a little bit of the crude oil. So after waiting a little while, our rancher started ranching our crude oil cow yeah when you pick him up in like a safari net or a soul vial or whatever and you put him back down at least in project ozone 2 there was the, another bit of information that says at the top when you're looking at the fluid cow that said cool down yeah unfortunately that's not being shown here on this tool tip maybe it would be if i crafted the one probe and it gave me more information about this animal uh but anyway uh, you can see that it has used quite a bit of energy here. It uses probably around 500 RF every time it, it ranches the animal. And I was watching this and it seems like it's about every 1200 second or 1200 ticks. You can see it just did it right there. The next two times it won't get any fluid, but the time after, so 1200 ticks later, which is 60 seconds, it will grab some more fluid from the cow. So... You see right now we got 15 buckets of the stuff which is great so we're getting one bucket per second or i'm sorry per minute not per second uh we can make more of those cows like there is the uh way we can spawn in exact copy we can make more of them if we want to do that it might even be a thing where we eventually get ourselves you know a refined fuel cow which would be really good uh but for right now 
just kind of waiting for more to spawn in. That's a night slime cow over here. And I thought we had a witch water cow, which seems to have disappeared. I think it either got pushed off the edge or whatever. I don't know. Um, I don't think we really need night slime for much, but I probably should look at trying to capture these cows and keep a collection just in case. You never know. But yeah, we're kind of waiting for more cows to spawn in. <laughs> I got rid of all of our extra animals that we aren't really needing at the moment. Uh, so what we need to do now is take that fuel and use it as power, right? So we need to get ourselves a compression dynamo. So I have everything together here for that. And that was a silver coil. Silver plus redstone. Two tin gear, just some tin and iron. Nothing big about that. Some iron redstone. Yeah, so this is pretty much inexpensive to make one of these compression dynamos. Now it does say it requires fluid fuel and coolant. So coolant for these things, if I remember correctly, is either water or gelid cryothium. And the only difference in these thermal expansion machines, I think, is that it goes through water faster than gelid cryothium. Now the gelid cryothium is not that easy to get a whole lot of until we get a gelid cryothium cow. So we'll probably just end up using water. So in order to get water in this pack, is there some kind of a water generator that we should look at? Is there some kind of infinite water thing? Uh, I know there's the aqueous accumulator from thermal expansion, but I don't know if there's another like infinite water source. Hmm. I'm not seeing anything that's just standing out searching for water. Let's go aqueous accumulator. Uh, yeah, I don't know if these things work better than they did before. It might be a thing where we don't want to do this and we want to do the extra utilities route. Man, I don't know. I guess we'll make one of these and see how it works. Uh, I'm pretty sure like most of these machines, you can upgrade them, but I don't remember if these will be better. Like I think they might only make water at a certain rate regardless. It's just like their internal inventory gets bigger. So we'll find out as we make this thing, I suppose. Was that the last to buy iron? Oh, oh no, we got iron blocks. Okay, I was about to freak out. Not gonna freak out, we're good. We do need more iron though, and a copper gear. Let's go ahead and unblockify these things. Make our copper gear first. Or I guess we'll make some nuggets. <laughs> we have a copper. Oh darn, we are another copper ore. All right, well we need to get ourselves some quick copper. Now what I've been doing for getting our ores, or I guess our pieces over here turned into our ingots, I've just been taking a stack throwing it into the smeltery and then pouring out the the blocks there's always one left over here so i put that one into our sag mill that turns into two potentially four depending and then just right into this guy the rest of these will turn into i think eight or ten blocks worth of copper so that's going to take a little bit of time for us to go through all of that i did that with silver earlier <laughs> yeah we needed silver for that silver reception coil Okay, so copper is an issue right now. We need two more pieces of that. So we just pretty much need to cast out two blocks and then I'll do the rest of that off camera. Uh, and unfortunately, with the newer versions of Tinker's Construct, it takes a while for you to pour out the fluid, which we can speed up, but then it also takes a certain amount of time for it to harden, which we can't really speed up unless we have some kind of like an acceleration wand or whatever. And I don't believe those exist in this mod pack. I don't think things even such as the imaginary time block, which we will be able to get to eventually, will help speed up machines. I believe those only work on plants. So yeah, there's really not much you can do about that thing. So, hmm, I don't know. We might move away from using the smell tree in the future once we get some automations going. So there's our device frame. There's our aqueous accumulator. Uh, yeah, it's been a while since I've used this, but I do remember you had to have two source blocks of water touching this and then I'll start generating. I think it generates water from air at a very, very slow rate. Do I have an infinite water source around here? I got a water source here. I got a water source there. Oh, I have infinite over here. I was like, what did I do with all my water? Hmm. Okay, so let's grab a bucket of this and then I'll have to do something about it here in a minute. Get another one. Lots of these endermen in here. All right, so let's set this guy down. Does this generate water by itself? Doesn't look like it's doing anything. It is making sound though. 
information. Extracts water from its surroundings. Place in a pool of water to speed this up. Don't drown. Okay, well, I guess we're going to need some blocks <laughs> so to, to control the water. That's one thing I did forget to get. All right, let's grab some slabs like we do. Oh, stone. And we'll turn the stone into slabs, and I'll get another bucket of water while we're at it. That should be more than enough. Okay, yeah, let's come over here real quick, grab one more bucket of water, and then we'll check out this aqueous accumulator and hopefully get our dynamo going for the first time. I'm really hoping this is going to work and it's not going to be like just a complete waste trying to get this thing set up. I think what we'll do... Whoa! Let's not do that. I think what we'll do, let's set up... Where's the exact center of the room here? Okay, move that torch. We'll do like a 3x3 three three and then we'll set it in the center. Is this... Okay, that's the center block right there, so we can do one of these. Yeah, I think that'll be good. So we'll do water here, water there. Very good. All right, so we'll fill back up our water. Aqueous accumulator right there. Doesn't appear to be doing anything. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> I grabbed three blocks. Oh, six blocks. Okay, so this is a little bit better than I expected that it would be. I don't know. Does it go faster the more water that's surrounding it? Like if we put water on top and below, maybe? I don't know. I don't know if it's really worth testing out or anything so let's put this guy right here uh it looks like we're gonna need to get ourselves our crescent hammer i don't think we want to point it down i think we want it pointed upwards okay we'll grab one of those i should probably make myself some kind of a bag that i can carry around with me like an ender pouch or something <laughs> that i can keep my tools in that's usually a thing i like doing okay so there we go now it's facing upwards we're getting water in it. It's pushing water quite quickly. That's good. All right. So this is 40 RF per tick. Let's grab a bucket of crude oil. So it looks like it is doing something. All right. Well, I mean, that's, that's pretty good, right? Power output 35. All right. Why is that going down? Oh, right. These things throttle themselves the more power that's stored in its internal in its internal buffer here. So as this drains, then we'll start using fuel faster and producing more RF. I think is how that works. Okay. Well, uh, I got some things that we need to do. We need to make the stills. I think that's what they were called. The fractioning still. And then we can look at making the upgrades for this. I don't know if we can afford those yet or not. Let's take a look at the thermal kit. All right, so that's Invar plus bronze. I think we can make bronze. This, the reinforced upgrade kit requires electrum, which is gold and silver, a silver gear, and then fuse quartz, which we can make just some uh, quartz in our alloy smelter upstairs. We still only use that tenth of a bucket. You know, this might turn out to be a pretty good power source. This might be pretty good. Okay, let me get some things going here and we'll be back, guys. All right, guys, well, I was gonna go ahead and make the stills and all of this kind of stuff, but then I realized, oh man, we're like so late in the video right now, so we'll probably have to wait until next time. Uh, I went ahead and I did make some fluid conduit here so we can start doing some things. So right off the back of our rancher here, you can see right now uh, that as it ranches, we are extracting out of it using this plain old basic fluid conduit, which I really want to upgrade. <laughs> uh, so we're extracting out of it. It's going right up into our drum here. So we have a decent amount of stuff being stored up. And then we're going to extract out of this one, which fills up this fluid pipe. Uh, yeah, so that works just fine. So it has filling up this fluid pipe. And that is being inserted right into our dynamo here, which is constantly being full and constantly running. You see right now it says 4 RF per tick because this thing is completely filled up. And that's like the lowest amount of power that it can make. Anyway, so we want this dynamo. I, I, I don't know if this is where we're going to per, permanently keep these things. I just kind of set it there and then I added in this other conduit so we can add some next to it. But we might move this. But anyway, we want to be able to use this power to power that rancher over there so we can keep ranching and keep making 
more of this crude oil, right? So what we need to do is grab some of this energy conduit. This is the really basic stuff. And just place the shift click it on there, right? So that'll grab power out. Do this, and then we can just kind of run this along that same conduit so we're not taking up extra blocks. That's one of the nice things about Ender.io conduits is that you can run multiple together like that. And then we'll just run that over and then I'll connect over to this other conduit, right? And then that'll keep this thing powered. So now we have full energy over here. Our dynamo is probably producing some power to fill up the internal buffer of the conduit itself. Yeah, each one of these pieces does contain a little bit of internal power storage. So yeah, our thing is completely empty right now as it powers that up. Um, let's see. I guess we don't need the power being connected here, so we can disable that. And then this we can set to extract only, so we're not trying to feed power back into it. It's only extracting out of the dynamo. Not that that really should matter, but it's one of those things, when you start messing around with like the capacitor banks later on, it'll kind of mess around with the readings if you don't set it correctly. So yeah, we're inserting power over here, we're extracting power over there, and everything should be self-sufficient. So as long as this is in a chunk loaded area, our cow here, our crude oil cow, We'll start providing all sorts of power to our base for a very, very long time. This definitely will keep running for forever, as long as nothing happens to our cow. Now that I said that, I kind of think that we should invest in a second, or at least a way to duplicate this cow and put it in a safe spot, <laughs> just so we don't ever lose it. Oh man, so this is kind of a neat little power setup. I like this, using, yeah, move fluids, plus MFR, plus thermal expansion, all these mods together are creating our power. That's pretty awesome. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.